So yeah, bless up everyone. Uh, my name is Shivani uh, David. Uh, who am I and where am I? Uh, I just want to maybe start just by, or maybe let's do something fun. Uh, feel free for, let's see, for the next maybe two, three minutes, four minutes, whatever. Uh, let's, if, if, if you're keen to share uh, something that you unexpectedly learned recently, like within the last few minutes, within the last few seconds, within the last day, or maybe something within the last month. But the question is like, uh, for you to share an uh, invitation for you to share something that you unexpectedly unexpectedly learned uh, so uh, something that just like you realize oh shit I learned something I just learned this oh yeah so I know it's a bit of a weird question and yeah but feel free feel free to jump into it if you feel drawn to it uh, and yeah, feel free. I, the, the, the space is very comfortable, very chilled. If you're more comfortable having your camera off uh, and and communicating via text, feel free to do so. And if it's, if you're comfortable showing your face, uh, feel also free to do so. Uh, yeah. So the question once again is: uh, the invitation is to share something that you unexpectedly learned within the last few days, minutes, seconds, hours. Yeah. And so anyone feel free to jump in popcorn style. Uh, yeah. Hi. Hello, everybody. My name is Andrea. Um, I can go first, I guess. <laughs> I'm already speaking. <laughs> um, I guess I recently learned, and it was yesterday, how fast help can come if you ask for it directly I'm always very um just very weary of asking for help I don't want to incommodate people but yesterday I found myself in a situation that it just required like it just required it required urgent help and yeah and just this person showed up immediately and that was just amazing and beautiful Yo, bless up, Andrea. Thank you very much for sharing. And yeah, I don't want to comment too much, but I receive it. And yeah, thank you very much for sharing. Anyone else want to go? I shared it in earlier. Hi, everybody. I'm Tess. And uh, Andrea, I really liked your what you shared. So thank you. And uh, I had something happened earlier this week where I, I'm a big rock climber and so I planned to go climbing and I was really excited to go but then I just really wasn't feeling well and I, I still don't even know what it was but like I was out and about and doing my errands and I was going to go climbing and and just decided you know what I need to go home and rest and like that's what my body needs more than to exercise and I did that and I got a really long good night sleep and it was and so it's a good lesson in like listening to my body. Mm. That's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. And oof, so 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 timely, I think. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna you guys are like just adding flavor and I'm gonna put spices to, to this conversation. I feel like I'm getting goosebumps when you guys are speaking. Uh, so bless up and thank you very much for that. Yes. Uh, Andrea, I mean, not Andrea, uh, Sierra asked, what's the prompt? So the prompt was uh, an invitation to share something that you unexpectedly learned, like like a random learning that actually was like stuck in your mind, you know, to say, wow, I actually learned this, you know? So yeah, mm. that was the prompt. Um, can I go? Can I jump in? Go on, thanks. Um, hey everyone, I'm Sierra. Um, I think what's standing out right now is just a this feeling of like trust. And it's a, it's a relearn. It's like a one I have to relearn over and over and over. But just like in this conference, right in this moment, um, like I feel like there's a part of me that has worked to set things up in a way that I could then, you know, let go and let other people take care of things. 
Um, but, and like hoping that I would like truly let go and let everyone <laughs> else take care of things. Um, but like noticing in moments like this, like this need to like control or like make sure everything's okay. But then, so this learning has happened like over and over again over the past, you know, 48 hours or whatever of like, you can trust, like it's just magical, like how, you know, everything is just flowing. And so people that I don't even know are just, you know, taking the torch and moving forward and just making it happen. And I'm not like, making it happen at all like it's just everyone's doing their part and yeah surrendering exactly um so I'm just relearning surrender I think and yeah that's my thanks I'd love to go climbing yes, sometime Tess also I'm also a rock climber the energy of the mountains is in the building today or in the space today <laughs> place up place up Sierra thank you for sharing uh so anyone else want to go uh like i say feel free this is a comfortable space uh if you feel you feel free to share via text or sharing via the vessel of your voice uh yeah just happy to have you guys here so yeah i can share something um oh, yeah mine is really quick. sorry my video is off for the moment i'll turn it on later um but um yeah, I, I spent the last two years in New Zealand. My family and I got stuck there because of the pandemic. And um, most of my friends were um, indigenous to, to New Zealand. So most you know Maori friends. And I started learning uh, just basically out of respect for them and their ancestors, you know? And um, so I have uh, a test tonight for my Te Reo Maori class. And I just realized yesterday that it doesn't matter if I don't do well, I don't need to get a hundred. I don't need to get a nine. Like it just doesn't matter. I'm just gonna take it to see what I know, and to see what's Oof. into my bones, and that's it. It's just for me, and it doesn't matter how I do, um, which is historically not how I deal with those things. I stress out and I overwhelm, and I drop out or I quit, and I'm just like, you know what? It doesn't matter. That's it. Yo, Vega, please, please do, do you help me with the pronunciation of your name? Aisha. Aisha. Bless up, Aisha. Thank you very much for sharing. <laughs> what a, what a one, what a, that like strong resonance, like, it's actually weird. Sometimes I feel like we're in a matrix and the people that come to spaces are like, you know, the thing that people that come to spaces are the ones meant to be in that spaces. Sierra knows, I like to like put, like add a lot of CGI to my life. So I like to... I like to live in the fairy tale, uh, and just the the interactions thus far in the space is like making me. It's, it's synonymous to the idea of Power Rangers, and I feel like, yeah, there's. I just feel connected. I feel deeply connected. Uh, there's someone new who just joined, uh, so I'm just sharing this for you. I'm not sure. I'm unable to pronounce your name, because uh, it's. Yeah, it says Eiffel, <laughs> so I'm just gonna stick to that. So if, you, if, you, if you're interested and you wouldn't take up the invitation, we're all sharing something that we unexpectedly learned or something that we like had that reflection moment of thinking, yo, that was something profound. That was like, this is something that I'm like feeling or, or learning. Yeah, just that sensation of learning, something that, that gave you that vibes, that energies of being reflective of and, and having the ability to account for that specific lesson. So yeah. Well, more people are joining. Oh, hey, place up Nari. <laughs> so yeah, if anyone is else is keen to share. This is gonna be the vibe of the space, by the way, guys. We open, we're sharing, and that's gonna be it. <laughs> Forgiveness and its universal antidote. Oof. Thank you very much for sharing. Uh, I'm seeing uh, uh, O, so thank you very much for sharing O. And for Caitlin, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, I'm sure if, if I can just ask Sierra Dan just to resend the, the, the invitation. 
But I think for now, what I want to do is, and yeah, so for those of you that haven't shared yet, can I please advise or invite you to share in the text or in the, the, the chat thing? Uh, and yeah, I, I have a little like idea for what, what, how I want to like dive into this concept uh, or at least this conversation. And I want to just start by giving a short introduction as to myself and the work that brought me to this uh, intention. And then I have a few ideas and uh, uncoverings that I want to share. And then we're gonna, like, that's gonna be on the table for us to chop up, uh, dissect, reflect. And then we're gonna have another session of some sharing where I will just share some more concepts. And then, yeah, then I'll have, then it's open. So there's gonna be two spaces where I'll be talking a lot. That's all. Uh, and yeah, so let me start. Just before you get yes. into it, Johnny, does anyone mind if I live stream the session to our Facebook page so others can tune in that way? Okay. Okay. See. Thank you. That okay. still work for you? Sweet. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, also, at, at any time you feel like moving your body, uh, stretching your arms, uh, shaking your head, I deeply, deeply, deeply invite yourself to disrupt sort of your posture and ways of being in front of a screen. Uh, like I want you guys to be a wild child uh, for, this, for this session and just allow your body to feel and move and bio breaks if you need to go take a, take like a leak or use a bathroom feel free to, yeah, put the camera off, maybe let us join you and come back. <laughs> or oh, not, or oh, not, or oh, not, or oh, not. <laughs> yeah, okay. My name is Shamani, everybody, and I've been sort of brought up in this life uh, in a family of teachers. My grandfather uh, was a teacher and, and eventually worked in the church. Uh, we became like a pastor and carried the same role of being a teacher, uh, just in a different form. Uh, my parents, both my dad and my mom, uh, were teachers, my mom more so, and still works in the Department of Education in South Africa. So for a lot of my time growing up, oh yeah, I have two brothers uh, as well. I have an older brother. To go take, a, take like a leak or you. I'm sure, but am I, I'm hearing myself echo. Uh, I'm going to continue. I hope it clears up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I got two brothers as well. I'm, I'm the middle child uh, and I got an older brother and a younger brother. Uh, I hope this makes sense, plays a role in the story somewhere. Uh, so I spent a lot of time in schools, whether it was after school, just being with my mom uh, as she finished marking and, and connecting the dots. Uh, to even spending time early mornings in school. Like, yeah, I spent a lot of time in school. And weirdly enough, there came this time when I was in, I went eventually to, to high school. I started feeling different and learning different things about myself. And yeah, I just, I just felt like a difference in, in who I was becoming or what I was learning uh, compared to what was happening around me. Uh, be a middle child thing or it could just it could be something else i'm not i'm yet to sort of understand what it was so eventually yeah I, I, that, that 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 feeling i'm talking about happened strongly towards the end of high school so eventually i ended up going to university uh i studied educational psychology at the university of johannesburg and after three years i walked out of the university experiment because I started to learn it was an experiment. Uh, there were a few things that happened that uh, sort of were, you can say red flags for me. Uh, one was like, I loved learning. I was the type of person in my varsity sort of space in university to sit in front of every lecturer uh, in like front row. And I was like, oh, he's throwing, doing some mad question asking, uh, throwing, throwing the lecturers with some controversial questions at times. So I was really interested and I enjoyed the idea that, because I've made a lot of friends, I used to sell, okay, I hope this is a safe space, but I used to sell ganja, like weed, marijuana in, in, in varsity. So that 
I made a lot of friends and that gave me access to different uh, different lectures and different faculties. So I could sometimes do transactions in a lecture. Uh, and with this, I, I started, that was like my world started opening. Instead of just doing what I was there for, I had the ability to start realizing that there was so much happening. So I jumped around, went to different lecturers, uh, lectures where I could. And yeah, I started paving my own learning career. Uh, there was this thing that happened with my last module, it was psychopathology. So I was also selling, uh, like guys, my mom taught me how to hustle. So yeah, I blame my, my, my ways of hustling uh, on her. <laughs> so I was also selling a lot of uh, pirated, uh, bootlegged Xbox games. Uh, I was doing the whole torrent thing, going to the websites, downloading the games and selling that. That I was doing because uh, like my mom took out debt to pay our my, my, my varsity fees. And my mom is like a lot of people of color that have a terrible relationship with money, only due to the fact that money was introduced as a, as a value system that is not biological resonance to our way of being, our way of existing. This was something that we were trying to assimilate. So we had a terrible experience with money, still do. We're learning to be better with money. Uh, but anyway, so with this, uh, I was helping myself and my mom by doing this, creating these bootlegged games and selling it. And so we had a textbook for psychopathology that cost about 3,000 rand. That's about $100. Uh, my mom, oh, less, no, $100. I don't know. I don't know what's conversion. But it costs like 3,000 rand for, for the context of South Africa. And my mom was, at this time, was going to take out another loan, a micro loan. To pay for this and i told my mom hold up hold up hold up don't pay for this joint i saw on the same website that there was access to the xbox games there was also textbooks so i bootlegged a psychopathology textbook and i had the ability to pass the that exam specifically with like 75 percent and i was like what that's madness uh i realized that you know how like varsities have revised each year they have a revised textbook so i found that Knowledge wasn't wasn't changing. Knowledge never changed the same. Freud, uh, Freud's theory, uh, and who's that other guy, B.F. Skinner, those homies, their knowledge is always going to be their knowledge. It's not going to change. It's not going to mutate. So I started realizing that there's a money trail to the idea of knowledge, that these textbooks were being printed by certain, certain publishing houses, written by certain authors who were connected to the varsity. Yet the concept stayed the same. It was just a different author or a different year, but the content stayed the same. And I passed, I passed that exam with like, I think that textbook was probably like a five year, five year old textbook, meaning that it wasn't like a new edition, but the content remained the same. And I had the ability to pass with a bootleg textbook. And I was thinking to myself, shit, how many homies are in this university whose parents went to do exactly what my parents did and take out that loan. And why is the need to take out the loan? Why is the varsity or the university being so uh, invitational about this loan story and about this idea of this education? Yet this education begets stress and all sorts of anxiety. So that was one of the red flags. Another red flag happened later on where I had longer locks. My locks are a bit shorter now. Uh, but I had longer locks and I would eventually go to work in a public school. I needed to do uh, six months of practicals within a public school. And I was told that my way of being, my locks is not professional. So once again, I was like, hell no, I'm not going to cut my locks. I just, it just felt uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, for many reasons. I'm not going to dive too much into that. But yeah, so all of these red flags happened and... Uh, I told my mom I was going to do, I, I want to switch up, I want to drop out. And note, at this time, I'm getting scholarships, I'm getting like this invitations to do my postgraduate from the varsity. So th there was this, this perfect setting of a perfect academic career that was just unfolding because I hacked the system. And it's at that point that I told my mom, no, I'm not going to do this. And they were like, oh, no, what the hell? Thousands of arguments, like literally probably like, 10, 12 hours worth of argument for from both my mom and my dad as to why I need to finish my degree. Uh, but I felt I have a very interesting relationship with chaos. If it's chaotic, it's right. So 
I found myself being intuit intuitively yoked by the chaos. And I said, I'm, I'm walking out, I'm walking out. And I walked out and I walked out to this advert that was in our local newspaper classified. It said, because I wanted to travel, I wanted to be in community. And I, at the time before learning about like a lot of political stuff, there was this thing hosted in Israel called the kibbutz which is like you work for half the day and you spend the time walking around or being with people. Uh, and yeah, so at this time, I, I, I wanted to do that and I needed money. And I found this thing that said superhero needed to teach five kids. It was a, basically a bunch of parents, mothers uh, who came from the mainstream private school, public school sector, uh, who wanted to do something different for their kids. So I was like, yo, let me jump onto this van and let me let me let me let me just facilitate for these kids. It's a homeschooling environment, and these parents are like they know they, 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 the essence was they know that their children aren't the people that the school is describing them to be. So they want a space where someone can come in and just cultivate them. But yeah, it wasn't it wasn't as clear, and there was lots of still a lot of assumptions as to what this looked like. Uh, so I met these kids uh, and these uh, young people are like my mentors and they're the ones that like have brought this conversation up. Uh, and like, yeah, so my mom, I have to just back like my mom is a teacher and she loves children. So every holiday she would invite all my cousins to our house and she would create games, treasure hunts, all sorts of weird things to, 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 to stimulate us, I guess. Uh, but she had a deep passion for like doing a lot of social experimentation with young people and she, and being a guinea pigs was extremely fun and amazing. And it's that way of being with young people that I started practicing with these young people, the, the young people that I was meant to teach because these the parents at the time had no curriculum. So I had the ability and the freedom to do whatever. And in developing a relationship with them, in simply developing a relationship with them, I was accounting for some mad, mad learning. An example of this would be a four-year-old. At the time, we would play this game where we passed the ball to each other. And I kicked the ball and I, I would miss the, the specific target. And the four-year-old said to me, ah, oh, Shivani, you missed. Minus one. I'm like, what? Let me experiment with this. I kicked again and I missed intentionally. They're like, oh minus two. So at four years old, this young person was counting in negative numbers. According to curriculum, this is only something that gets introduced. Okay, what's four, five, six, seven? Yeah, three, three to four years later, negative numbers according to curriculum gets introduced three years later, yet this person was displaying a very interesting and profound knowing of negative numbers through simple play. And that started to crack everything. And I'll share one, 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 one more story with this one young person. Uh, this was a young person uh, that, but this was my first sort of experience with someone who was taking responsibility about how they're gonna be described. This was a five-year-old young person who was uh, gender neutral. They, 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 they the one, they the first people in my life to have, uh, yeah, to, to have sort of uh, show me and explain to me that uh, how to use pronouns in a, in a very more sensitive way and how our ideas of identity is very limited. So this five-year-old, uh, I, asked, I asked Leah one day, yo, Leah, aren't you sad? Like your mom and them leave every day uh, and you stuck here with me. Aren't you like sad? Don't you like miss your mom? And Leah said, what? Are you crazy? I'm like, what do you mean I'm crazy? Uh, and Leah said like, bro, close your eyes. And I'm like, what? It's like, bro, close your eyes. So I closed my eyes. And then Leah says, yo, can you see your mom? And I'm like, yo, I see my mom. Eyes closed, I see my mom. And Leah asked me again, can you hear your mom? Guys, I heard my mom. <laughs> and this is like simple, like you can close your eyes now. You can see your mom and you can hear your mom. And then they asked me, so how can you ever miss your mom if you have ability 
to close your eyes and not only hear her, but see her. And I was like, poof, like mind blown. So the, 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 the hierarchical dyna dynamics of how I understood learning started to crack and it started to, to, I started to be inspired and draw wisdom, deep, profound wisdom, the wisdom that I never knew I needed in my life right then. And that led me onto this rabbit hole of exploring the exploring how knowledge is can be displaced exploring the, the diversity of knowledge exploring what knowledge is so about nine years later we have a community in south africa called the reimagined learning community which is like an unschooling self-directed community that is like deeply rooted in restorative practices uh, around food around culture uh, around language uh, and it was built on the dreams and the, the, the advice of young people. And yeah, it's a, I can say a thriving experiment in, in doing things differently through the radical sort of approach of unschooling and self-directed education, where learning is like basically a byproduct of our existence. And this has led me to do a bunch of research and, and a lot of uh, yeah, introspection into myself about how learning shows up and that we, we have this day called Day of Trying to Learn Nothing. So somewhere in like April, we have one day and this is maybe a challenge for everyone. And this is a challenge into thinking, challenge, an invitation into challenging your thinking. Day of trying to learn nothing for one day. So for tomorrow, okay, it's difficult. Maybe for a day that the conference is not happening because the, the conference is high stimuli. So on a day when the conference is not, not happening, maybe next week sometime, I dare everyone and I invite everyone to, to, as a family or as a partnership or even as a relationship with yourself, try to learn nothing for one day. See what happens. And we can all assume what will happen. Like it's impossible, you know? And so what does that mean for learning? What does that mean? If it's impossible not to learn, what does that mean for our ideas about learning? And it's on that point that I think I wanna pause, stop talking for a bit and I wanna take a sip. And yeah, I wanna open up conversation, reflection and sharing. That will be like, that's, that's, so that's the first part of that long talking session. So that's, I'm done with the first part of long talking and yeah, just opening up. For, for those ideas of like, yeah, what, 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 whatever was, whatever, whatever anybody resonated with or felt like spoken into or feel like speaking into, also even if, if, even if you want to hold a moment of silence, like it's all groovy. So yeah, I'm just opening up the floor for everyone. I'm finding myself reflecting about the kind of role of teacher and how it is so powerful, Giovanni, to hear you talk about, like it was so bi-directional, right? And like, I think about like, almost like teacher as a coach of some sort, or just, yeah, that there is the learning that goes, if you come, if you go into a space as the teacher, like that kind of hierarchical power structures that are there. And it sounds like you didn't do that. And it, it was really, it, you know, you were able to have those experiences that you had. It's really beautiful. Thank you, Tess. Anyone else feel like sharing? I really resonated um, with the idea of chaos and learning in chaos and just moving around it. I avoid chaos <laughs> um, constantly. I try not to have it. Um, but also I think that moving through chaos intentionally 
right? Um, like acknowledging the chaos and just strategizing around it, even though like, you know, your strategy might, might fall or shape, um, might also allow you to realize like sort of what your story is sharing, realize who, who are other beings that can teach you, like can allow you to, to recognize other points of, of knowledge that you are not necessarily considering. So I, I, yeah, I haven't even, yeah, I haven't really looked at chaos in a way of like, you can learn from, I mean, I know you can learn from it, but not just, I don't know, just, just like, I was just thinking around it. So thank you for sharing. Thanks. Thanks so much, Shivani. I just add one thing that's on my mind. Um, and thanks for sharing those stories. I've heard some of them before, but it's just like always. Um, yeah. So yeah, just picturing those moments that you've had with those, those particular young people is just so like, I feel like I get to learn so much through those. Um, so thanks for sharing them. But one thing that I've been thinking about learning is just like how uncontrollable it is and how, because of that, how sacred it is. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking about how we, we don't, we wanna control what we learn, but we, we really can't. <laughs> and so like, how, how do we, it's not so much like the question around like, how do we learn as if like we could strategize around that, but like, how do we create the, the habitat or the, the environment in which we can place ourselves that can nurture the potential for learning um, in a way that that really is in alignment with who we are authentically. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, it definitely it's like a it's like a shift in how we relate to even the concept of learning. Um, and I really love, yeah. I love how you bring, you are you're sharing, you, you can share those through, like the, the easiest way to understand that is, is through these experiences, these stories, specifically with young people. Thank you, Sierra. I'm wanting to maybe give one more minute for space for sharing or two more minutes, three more minutes. I'm also like, yeah, I'm just a bit nervous. But yeah, uh, let, 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 let it be what must be. Um, hi, I'm Nari. I, I just, I kind of going on what you were saying, Sierra, I just, feel like you can't force epiphanies, you know, like you can only, like you're saying, like you can only create the conditions to which you can be open to hopefully catching one, you know, it's like standing in the rain, you can't catch all of that water, you know, but if you hold out a bucket, you can maybe catch a little bit of water. And I kind of feel like, um, yeah, some of the epiphany moments, you know, for me with my daughter, who's seven now, um, happened when she was younger, and they still happen all the time, but in a different way. But I specifically when she was um, literate in our capitalist world, um, just all these images that we're constantly bombarded with, and now we have all these associations and conditioning around, um, like Mickey Mouse. Um, she thought Mickey Mouse was like a different animal um, or like the apple symbol because I have an apple as a pear. And it was just like these really wonderful moments where, um, you know, I got to be taken out of all of my conditioning and see something uh, that I had taken for granted and um, had just been conditioned into, into um, something new and something different. And it removed from kind of all of these capitalistic entrapments, you know, um, and that still happens in different ways now, um, you know, in 
the the world that she's growing up in and everything it happens um unfortunately less now but um i still have those moments to remind her and myself and um you know that like there is this uh a way Oh, did we lose Natalie? We lost her. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, I lost you. Okay. Minute, but I'm back. Too bad. <laughs> Would you like to continue, Natalie? Would you like to continue sharing? I'm not sure. Oh, that's okay. Some somebody else can can share. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. And yeah, I think the next part is we're going to be speaking into to to these these things that uh, both you or all of what everyone has shared, uh, and even what was shared uh, in the beginning. So yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I guess uh, I'm not sure. Are you guys? Okay, if we deep dive, or does anybody want to say something, or even just want to take a moment to breathe before we deep dive once more? Uh, I just wanted to say one thing, also going to be really quick, but um, to what Sierra was saying about creating the space, what I find works, well, I don't, I don't know if it works, but what I just find myself doing is um, protecting the space, because it is always already there. Um, it puts me in a strange position because a lot of the time I'm just playing defense and just making sure that, you know, no one disturbs the field. Um, and by no one, I mean no other outside authority figures, you know, or, or something imposing things. I'm talking specifically in terms of my two children. Um, and then also protecting my, my space, right? So I'm, I'm protecting their, their space and mine. Um, yeah, and, and I find that the more the more I do that, the less I have to create anything. Yeah. Oof, oof, oof. Can I get an amen? <laughs> yeah. <I love> <laughs> totally. Shivani, um, do we want to bring in there's a there's a couple things in the chat. Um oh, was oh, yeah. that? I was saying that um, their microphone doesn't work, but I appreciate the and, and love the space you have created inside for the passing and transcription of knowledge. As an autistic adult who has experience with learning disabilities, there are many ways to teach children and we must remain open to them showing us how as well. Um, thanks for that, O. Yo, please up with it. And, and that's indeed, yeah. There's another question I was gonna read, but. No, 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 go, 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 go. So Robin says, even with the chaos, I'm curious how you all track your learnings, how you distill and synthesize experiences in order to share with others um, or just understand for, for yourself. Writing stuff down feels like it kills the magic sometimes. I love that question. It's something that I am also wrestling with. Thank you. Thank you for those shares and thank you for helping me with that, Yera. Uh, I think what I want to invite before we deep dive, inviting that uh, disruption and chaos in your body, your movement, just to swing your neck a few times, just to, if you need to fart, please fart. If you need to burp, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm holding space for our biological, natural, full selves. Ooh, I love it. And there's something I don't know satisfying about seeing people like, like enjoy their bodies and just relieve their bodies. Like just, yeah, feel into their bodies. I've been watching this on Zoom lately and I was like, oh, that's so cool. It makes I feel the vibes. <laughs> See, so here we go. Uh, so, Realizing, I think, uh, breath as this 
uncontrollable force. One, or for me, I started relating, I mean, realizing learning as an uncontrollable force. I started relating learning to breath. I started realizing that I can't like, like the experiment goes, or try, try to learn nothing for one day. You realize that it's impossible. So the, the assumption of like what was said with regard to superior, inferior of knowledge, or at least of learning and teaching becomes disrupted because if no one can account for when it happens, it also will lose the ability to account for uh, who, who, who is creating it or who's, who's projecting it because there's learnings and, and I'm sure that is just a human experience. So with, with all of this, I related to, to the human experience, meaning that like, because we're human, we, we have the ability to relate to it. So a lot of us learn from non animate uh, beings or non animate is a very limited and Western idea of looking at it, but some of us learn from mountains. Some of us learn from the sky. Some of us learn from dreams. Some of us learn from funerals and weddings. Uh, some of us learn from dark spaces and some of us learn from very light spaces. So when we start to speak about what learning looks like, it, 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 the assumption looks institutional, the, 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 in the, the assumption looks intentional, but is it the reality taking the fact that we just like confess that we, we, we can't control learning, rather learning being this wild breath. And I, I relate it to breath because the cool thing about breath is like, it doesn't matter how messed up you are. It doesn't matter how much you don't want to breathe. It doesn't matter. Uh, like breath is unconditional. There's this also another thinking about breath that I have that like says that just like you like you lose track of your heart beating, like no one here is like, like no one here is intentionally making their heart beat. None of us are like in that meditation of making our hearts beat. It's something that feels like it's just happening. Whether we sad, whether we're happy or not, it is just happening. Breath is very similar to that. So I started realizing that heartbeats, breath, and learning. And this is how learning for me has become sacred. The fact that it's this wild human experience that I have no idea about like, I don't know what when's going to be my next lesson, guys. I don't know what's the next thing I'm going to learn. I don't know it. I don't know it. Like, and that's, that's not, I'm not unique in that. Dan, I know Dan doesn't know what he's going to learn. I know Sierra doesn't know what he's going to, what she's going to learn next. I know Andrea doesn't know what she's going to learn next. You know, this is, this is, I'm not unique in this. None of us know what going, we're going to learn next. None of us know how we're going to learn what we're going to learn next. So that like, for me, that like breaks down everything. Then questions around the de-academizing of, of knowledge start to show up, meaning that is, is knowledge academic? Like now we start to move from like the locativeness of learning, like not just locative as in a geographic location, but let's talk about maybe theoretical ideas of, of, of this locativeness. So is knowledge, does knowledge exist in thinking? Is like knowledge the, 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 the product of thinking? Maybe it is, maybe it's not. But I know with these young people, I'm with, they're not thinking, they're not thinking. They, they like, they, they like at the trans fest on, on, on some magic mushrooms where life is just coming at them and they're making sense of it every single second. One crazy uh, thing that, that, that I heard earlier today I was in the in the talk of the re-signifying and yeah, rest rest restoration of 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 birth of natural ancestral birth practices, and uh, one of the elders mentioned the idea of the womb as the first institution of learning because it's in the womb where the baby starts to learn about the outside world. It learns the mother's voice. And I recently became a father, uh, like in August last year, 
to to a baby and we had like this crazy natural wild uh unassisted birth where it was just me and my partner in the room and the baby literally popped out into my arms and i was like almost like slipped it was just a mind-blowing experience and a very it was a new rabbit hole with regard to the ideas of learning because i also realized like the trauma around birthing like yeah it that, that requires its own talk <laughs> its own sort of one and one and a half hours but like just the yeah man being listening to mothers and understanding that sort of ritual of motherhood in whole all new levels and yeah yeah so so the work for me now has big 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 sort of energy around the womb and there was this thing that happened current recently with Aya I think it happened when they were three months old where I could look into their eyes and I could start to see they were learning and for the first time it was like I saw life I I started realizing they no more like just this baby that sleeps and shits a lot like for the first like month it's just like a a baby that doesn't it's not too animate it spends a lot of time sleeping but there was this moment like after two months uh at like three months of age where i started realizing if they are here they are present and it was only through my accounting for their learning that i realized the, the machine has started we can now say they are like alive uh and and yeah that 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 and the whole process of the birth, the fact that the birth was required us, the natural, I mean, the unassisted birth required, required us to, 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 to be to hold this element of trust, to, to hold this element of chaos, because we all had to hold space that, like, if, if, if my partner, if Anna Michelle needed to transition, meaning if she had to what in the Western mind we call death, which I haven't seen anything dead in my life, because not even this hat, the mere fact that it has, integrity there has a color that it resonates with the sun meaning that even when you burn it there's an energy release polluted pollution energy release but <laughs> there's an energy release on this on this cap meaning that it's storing energy so it, it's holding something it's, it's holding a sense of life so i haven't seen anything there but for the sake of the conversation if anna were to die in that rit ritual of in that process of birth in aya i had to be okay with the reality of that could happen and not, not hold myself responsible. I had to let go. I had to surrender. I had to trust that Aya wants to be here and Anna's body wants to have this ritual. And I, I hold no ownership. I hold no responsibility. I hold no sense of power over the next person. As much as I love them, as much as I uh, can create all sorts of like somewhat sensational fantasies about them i have to trust and it's that same trust that i give myself with regard to my process of learning because learning like breath like my heart beats like aya's life is strongly associated with living learning is strongly associated with living so if we are learning if i'm learning i am living and like, like so, 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 so that means that we can take the weight of our expectations for our learning supposed to show up, or even our cultivation of the safe spaces. Like, like, is 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 a safe space for learning a utopia type of question, or is a safe space of learning a place of chaos? So all those things start to now enter my mind and create a lot of confusion and questions, and I'm not yet to sort of answer them. But yeah, so I think before we deep, before we take a pause, I just want to share this that I wrote. So I wrote this like wild learning. So 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 rewilding learning, like and not 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 wilding as in the idea of I'm talking about wilding as a higher, higher sense of intuition, trust, not only connection, but a belonging. Learning as breath. Learning as a gift for connection, because it's through learning about the mother that the mom becomes the mother. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 all these momentous moments of learning that do change our role within communities, do change our roles in society. And it's 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 learning that holds that 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 it's the vessel for transition, even learning is the vessel for for transition. 
So learning as belonging, learning as sacred. The invitation to reclaim our learning. That means reclaim our breaths as a learning. Reclaim the presence of our like moment in time presence and the presence of others as learning. Reclaiming uh, connection as learning. Uh, so yeah, and then I spoke about, I just wrote here ideas of places of learning. So places of learning, dreams, uh, pain, sadness, happiness. And you guys can add to this, what are your spaces of profound learning that have made you the people that you are today and continue to make you guys. It's like, because learning is not cemented. Learning is not a moment in time. Learning is continuous and will always be a process. There, there will always be points of reflection, but the river still flows type of thing. Uh, and yeah, I, I also drew this little uh, thing with regard to, so like what was mentioned earlier with regard to the ideas of a learning culture, or not that, that when, when Aisha made mention of like standing up and always protecting or, or, or holding that safe space for, for, for learning. Um, I spoke about like, what that's I like thought I also thought very similar to that, and I was thinking like, what are what are what instead of like that safe space being being a locative space, like what is that process of safety that can promote learning? What are the processes that can promote learning? What is then how do those processes cultivate learning and support learning and and yeah uh, and all the and yeah and and seeding learning like what what how do we amend the soil for soil as a living composition, natural composition on earth, how do we amend, how do we support the, the, the soil in order to, 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 to let learning happen. And yeah, there was just, it was just a mind fart of a lot of ideas of, 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 of the systems. Like, because that's what I wanna get into. I wanna start being able to be receptive to these deep, natural, sacred, ancestral, cosmological uh, magic the witchcraft of learning, be it that, the, the wizardry, the magic, the Mickey Mouse, the Lord of the Rings, the Marvel and Disney, like those CGI ideas where that blow every idea that is maybe limited to, to what we've been told. I want to be in that world of learning. And, and, and yeah, I, I have a lot of questions still. And I'm still, like I say, in the process of of reclaiming this this process of, of learning to be sacred for myself. And yeah, it's it's it it continues, the river continues to flow and brings me to spaces like this and brings me to conversations with Dan, Sierra, and everyone else in this room. Uh, it brings me to the Ecoversity Alliance, it brings me to the Reimagine Education Conference. And and that's why why I'm so deeply and strongly wanting to be in these spaces because yeah, that's 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 what it is for me. That's that's my questions and 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 yeah, the the river thus far. And yeah, so that's on my point that I will like end it there. And and now it's ours. Now it's our space. It continues to be our space for more connection and talking and reflection. And I would love to hear from you guys, uh, as as you guys heard from me, oh, because like I say, I'm not I'm not speaking from this out of this from any other perspective but the human perspective so i know you're all relating to this because you all are humans and these are these are like the 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 like gravity we all just we function with it whether we see it or we don't see it we are we are bound by those by those metaphysic principles and i think learning is one of those strong metaphysic principles that is a blessing of our human existence thank you guys You are such a joy to listen to, Shivani. The energy that you bring into a space is just out of this world. Like, I, I could never, like, 
feel like it's too much to listen to your talk. So it's like, just thank you. Yeah, that was beautiful. Um, even being half distracted with the other conference stuff happening in the background, I still feel like every time I became fully concentrated, it was just like, oh yeah, that's it. That's the, the good stuff. Um, and like every time I went from being distracted to concentrated, like I feel like I came in and was like right with it. It wasn't like complicated or hard to, it was very, put in a very human way so I feel like even you know coming back it was like oh yeah this is totally um, relatable and uh, resonant and one thing that kept coming up is like I felt like you could substitute the word learning with the word meditation and this talk would have been it would have made equal sense had we substituted the word meditation in for learning um, which is so beautiful seeing the, you know, everything is meditation, everything is learning, everything is spiritual. It really uh, stretches the boundaries of learning so far that um, it's really empowering and exciting and fun, um, gives everything a purpose. Uh, so it was very, very nice to reconnect with that. And um, yeah, yeah, nice to be here, so. Thank you for holding and creating this space. Um, thank you so much, Lani, for all your words and all your sharings. I just want to like also thank you for this quote, like learning as loving and and how just contextualizing it, because like you can learn a lot of things. You can also learn to dismiss yourself you can learn to to not to gaslight yourself to to hate yourself and so i think it's really important to to associate learning with the intention of loving and the practice of i don't know just like to associate it with an intention that serves you that is generous to you because yeah like i said you can you can learn so many things and and you can get lost too in, 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 in what you hold on to as learning. So thank you for the learning as loving. I, I really, really enjoyed that. I have a little question. I want to ask, like, um, massive gratitude for the shout outs, everybody. And, but I, I, I have a question, like, maybe after, like, what, what are, what are spaces or what are, and not, I'm not, I don't want to localize it to this space specifically, but like taking maybe this conference or just your life thus far, what, what, what interest do, do, do does the space have? or do you, everybody in the space have for ways in which they maybe are thinking about reclaiming learning. And this can be physical or non-physical, spiritual and non-spiritual, like just just like, yeah, what, what are, I want to sort of also like be in, like just get from, you know, just hear from you guys, but like what are spaces in your life thus far like realizing that this learning is like this wild spirit that exists within our lives, whether we want to have them there or not. Where, where are spaces in which you'd like to cultivate or reclaim uh, learning? If, if this makes sense to you, also like silence is also true. Uh, the ocean, oh say the ocean, oh, oh. We have this saying in South Africa, we say like stop nonsense, like, uh, but it's like meant to, it, 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 it's weird how language does it. It's like, sounds like a condescending thing, but it's actually it's meant to ascend 
Uh, so like, yeah, uh, stop nonsense oh. <laughs> in a beautiful way. <laughs> so talk about synchronicities. I took off my mic to save the ocean at the same time that O wrote it in the chat. So <laughs> big up. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, Dave. That's it. What's that power ranger energy? <laughs> yeah, and that, and I wanted to share that because I, I've uh, started uh, diving for about two and a half years, and why I got completely hooked up on it is because for me, it's being down there, underneath the surface of the water. For me, is the most amazing exploration and learning journey I've been through. Uh, and it, it became so addictive because what I've realized is I can go underneath the water um, over and over again, like 1000 times in one week, every single journey in the same very spot will be different. Uh, because elements are changing, because currents are different. There are so many elements that are intertwined. And for me, it's one of the most amazing metaphors uh, that I've seen and the kind of peace that it gives me. Um, I've had some pretty rough um, journeys mentally in the past couple of years. And diving is the most quiet I've experienced ever uh, you can I, I cannot talk down there uh, it's impossible the only thing that I have to focus on is breathing but also not breathing too fast because the faster I breathe the faster I finish air so I can like it, it there is just this amazing synchronicity happening through it also it's ocean one thing that I wanted to bring here and uh, I bring another one that actually I, I haven't started to explore too much, but I feel it's becoming more and more present. Um, ever since I've been part of the Ecoversity space, I keep being exposed to all these amazing stories that so many of you bring to the table in terms of your history and the history of the place that you come from and uh, your elders and what they have and what they are telling you even right now. and in our territory over here, I feel it's something that we are completely disconnected from because we have this like westernized and we use this word so much, but this westernized and very uh, pragmatic way of looking at things, even how we look at history, we have no conception of elders. We have no conception of, of what has been here before us at a more metaphysical level. We just know history and facts, but we are not connected with them in the true sense of the word. So one thing that Ecoversity is, is bringing me is into this space of actually re reflecting of, and this is actually, sorry, I realize I'm talking too much, but I'm, go, I'm tired and I'm going into reflection. But one of the questions that popped up when we had our, uh, uh, European Ecoversity is gathering, somebody said, well, one of the things that maybe we should focus on or maybe discover is what does indigeneity mean for us here in Europe? Should we be using this word? If yes, what does it mean? If no, what other forms would it take over here for us, right? So, this is one of the areas in which I feel like reclaiming more than knowledge, connection, which is one kind of knowledge, but yeah, it's more about reclaiming connection with it. It's a massive form of knowing or learning is connection. That's the only thing that, 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 that is learning. So pick up, pick up that intention. <laughs> I think um, following on what Anna just said about ancestors and whatnot, um, 
So yeah, I've been trying to as a as a um, Caribbean American who's been, of course, um, cut off from roots and uh, connections and and uh, my ancestors beyond beyond the Caribbean. You know, there's no there are no records of where my people were from in Africa. There's no yeah, there's no trail really to follow. There's a DNA test, um, but it doesn't give you any of the actual, um, it doesn't really give you connection, I've realized. It doesn't give you stories. Um, it doesn't give you details. It doesn't give you names. It doesn't give you really much of anything. Um, and I wanna, I'm thinking back to something that you were just talking about, the metaphysics of learning and that you know, I look at how my kids learn now and because we learn without metrics and without school, there's a lot of things that they know or they learn that I don't know how they know or they've learned. Um, and it feels like it's such a beautiful experience for me because it really feels like um, like they've captured the opacity of learning, um, the shroudedness of learning before it was colonized by, you know, grades and metrics and and standards and and all of these things it's like actually we don't we don't always know how we learn um someone this weekend i think it was the the keynote speaker on the first day satish is maybe his name and he said something like you know the education systems are like um trillions of dollars to train one half of the brain when in fact you have this entire body that learns and takes in and processes information, you know. And when I see, for example, my daughter, she she does not like to read books. She um, she she likes to do contortion. <laughs> so she'll listen to books and do contortion. And at first I was like, she's not listening to anything. She's not hearing anything. But then I heard she's listening to a book about um, the Civil War. American Civil War. And from the other room, I could hear her rewinding the one part about the Black Soldiers Battalion. And I heard it about three or four times before I said, wait a minute, what is she doing? And I went in the room and looked and she was in a backbend, rewinding, <laughs> rewinding the audiobook so she could listen to this part about the Black um, Soldiers. She only asked me about it weeks later. She's, she, I guess she was formulating something, you know, as she moved and listened. She's trying to formulate like what this meant for her. Um, and that's kind of what I feel like <laughs> looking for information about my ancestors and trying to understand it, trying to understand where I come from, um, trying to make connections back to, you know, my quote unquote indigeneity, if that even exists for me in that way. And, um, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm wanting to learn like my kids do in that, um, in that context, um, I want to return it to its opacity because, because that's where it is, but then also knowing that, that there is learning there and that there is a way to, um, to access those stories. It just might not be in the way that I've been trained to think that learning and research and, and connection happens. Um, it's going to be something else and, I, and, and I'm not going to know what it is and that, that's also, yeah. That's the magic of learning or the metaphysics of learning. Mm -hmm. And that's also where it becomes scary. I had this conversation with one of the parents this week where what we want, like there's no, there's no description or there's no aesthetic for liberation or freedom. So when if freedom had to show up in front of us, how would we know it's freedom or liberation? Because we don't have any point of reference to, to frame it or to even like, you know, receive it. So sometimes when our young people act out or I think they tickle us where it doesn't itch, I think that's what freedom is. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm starting, I'm learning to build a relationship with that day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for that.